Welcome to the Tune of the Month, the first of 2015. And I thought this month that I would share with you a tune that has been really big for me in the year 2014. Um, this is a Scottish reel called Gladstone. It's by James Scott Skinner. And uh, this is a tune I've gotten a whole bunch of mileage out of um, and a whole bunch of fun with. It's on my album Flight. It's the end of uh, the MSR track on there. It's also the tune that I closed my performance with at the Glenfiddich World Scottish Championships in Scotland. And um, it's a very fun tune to create variations on. Uh, everybody's been asking me about my variations, so you know what? Here we go. I'll show them to you. This is the Gladstone. for joining us and hit repeat or I don't know wait for next month uh, for those of you who would like to learn it and figure out what on earth I was doing with all that stick around I'll show it to you um, so yes and as always as always if you would like to see what we're about to do written down in sheet music form with all the bowings and the ornaments and everything like that you can jump on my mailing list uh, on my website and I will always email out sheet music for the two of months so you can see it written down if that helps you um, okay, so this is a, it probably sounded like a long tune when I played it all the way through. In fact, it's very short. It's just an A section and a B section. How I extended it was by creating variations on just the B section. I didn't even vary the A section, I did it the same every time. Um, partially to kind of anchor the tune so you have something to always recognize and so it doesn't get out of control. I think too much variation sometimes you can lose the sense of the tune. And that's not so desirable in the Celtic traditions. So I kept that A section real consistent. Let's actually start with that A section so you have it ready to go. We're in A major, so three sharps. Slowly. following the tune of the month, that follows a lot of the rules we've been talking about. Um, that was two A sections, uh, the A section repeated, and it has a part one and a turnaround, goes back to part one and the ending. Here's part two is the ascending broken thirds. broken thirds, the turnaround starts with that little cut. Da -da 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 -da. So you can think of those patterns and it will really help you remember the tune. If you want to make it a little fancier, I do put just a couple of ornaments in. They're all Scottish flaps and they all go on the ascending broken thirds. Right here, flap. There's the 
the built-in cut. Same flat. Oh, sorry, I just passed it. Flap. Alright, and if you remember from past months, a flap is a Scottish two-note ornament where you start on the note, hit a grace with a note above, and come back to the note. Pretty easy. Um, so yeah, I just put in those couple of flaps. It doesn't really need that much else because it's a very notey tune. Here's the, uh, no, you already know it. Let's do the B section. <laughs> if you would like to uh, have another go at that A section, just rewind the video. I'll save you time now. So the B section, without any fancies, um, is always the first thing I play. I like to state the tune in its pure form before I start messing with it. Here's the B. to that it sounds like a ton of stuff. If you're looking at patterns, the B section is even easier than the A. It's a great big descending sequence. A sequence is when you take a little unit of notes and then play the same unit of notes starting a note below and walk it down the scale. Here's the first statement of the sequence. Starts on A. Start it on G sharp. F sharp. Uh, sorry, E, D, C sharp, and now turn it around. Sequence again, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, ending. That's the whole B section. And everything that we do in the variation is going to build off of that idea of the descending sequence. Pattern starting on A, pattern starting G sharp, F sharp, E, D, and walking down. Alright, so here's the pure B section. I just lost my train of thought. Pure B section! that has now become so standard it's passed into the vernacular um, and it started with uh, uh, with a beautiful Scottish fiddler Hector McAndrew and what he does is start each unit of the sequence with a cut like this through the B section. I'm going to do Hector McAndrews cut and then my cut and pure B section combo. 
Second time through the B. time I mean go back to the A section and when you come back to the B it's the new time. Third time is when we get into this stuff. It looks so impressive um, but it's actually very easy. All you need to do, the, what makes this easy is a left hand technique. It looks like bow but in fact it's your left hand. The trick that I'm doing is I call it glue finger. If you come out of Suzuki or anything like that, you may have heard this term. It means I'm going to glue my fingers down in the string. I'm not going to pick them up in between things. And I'm going to block this whole chord. That's an A chord. I have my first finger on my D string, second on my A, third on my E string. That's an A major chord. And then, while keeping all three fingers down, I'm just going to rock my bow back and forth. And the next chord, I, I'm going to keep the same descending sequence on the top. The top note is going to go A, G sharp, F sharp, like before. Here's the A chord. That one's, I'm going to spell my fingering from the bottom string on the D string. First finger, A string, second finger, E string, oh sorry, one, one, two. Alright. Four strings, fourth finger, second finger, open string, first finger. Third, first, open, open. Back to three notes. Two, two, three. One, one, two. Turn around. I said not to, but this one's so impressive it bears repeating. Here it is. I'll spell the fingerings as I go. One, two, three. One, one, two. Four notes. Four, two, open, one. One, oh, sorry, three, one, open, open. Two, two, three. One, one, two. you have to grab those finger numbers real fast it might work to rewind this video but uh, here it is all in slow motion without calling the finger numbers so you can hear the tune and I am going to repeat the same variation uh, both times even though I said in the first one it's kind of nice not to this is an exception case for me because it's so flashy <laughs> with your bow in your left hand. The more calm you are, the more exciting it will sound. All right, so hopefully you've got that one under your fingers because the fourth time through the B takes the same idea but just kicks it up a notch. Um, and this is, uh, it's kicked up a notch because I'm going to use third position. I'm going to make the chords voiced a little bit higher. fingerings. I'm in third position. I have three strings starting on the D and I have finger numbers two, two, three, spelling from lowest to highest. One, two, two. Two, two, three. One, one, two. Four notes in 
this is like the first one. Four, two, open, one. Three, one, open, open. Turn around. On the repeat, I'm gonna go back like the second time through the beat. and not repeat that really impressive third position. I kind of like it when I do my best trick, which is that third position um, broken chords. I kind of like to just do it once, like a magic trick, and never have people see it again. <laughs> so they don't get a chance to figure out how I'm doing it. It's got a little bit of smoke and mirrors, a whoa, what was that effect? That works really well whenever you're building variations. Save your best trick for last, only do it once. Um, it's also very likely that everybody's been so excited about those chords by now that they don't remember what I did in B2, so I'm okay to repeat it. Here's my entire fourth time through the B, B4, third position chords, and then the second half like B2. Gladstone variations as heard on my album Flight and in Scotland and a number of other places. Could you do more variations? Absolutely. I know I'm cooking up a new set of them for 2015 and uh, hopefully you'll be able to come up with some different things. Play with that idea of descending the sequence. A, G sharp, F sharp, E. And then there are lots of cool things you can do. Hopefully that's fun, it gives you some cool things to do on this tune, and also gives you an idea of how to start building variations on other tunes. And I can't wait to play this with you on the road and hear what other tunes you've come up with variations to. Thanks guys for hanging out, and I will see you in February. Bye!